Hello and welcome to Tech Deals. Today I'm doing a quick unboxing and overview of the H170 Intel 6th generation motherboards. In front of me, I have two Zeus motherboards, both very similar. I'll talk about those in a minute. But first, I want to say who should be watching this video and who should care. First of all, if you are either wanting to upgrade a three to seven year old computer or you want to build a new computer, this video is for you. If you've got an older machine that is three to seven years old and it's feeling kind of slow and sluggish, you're trying to run modern programs, you're multitasking, and everything just runs a lot slower, one solution could be a new motherboard, a new circuit board for the inside of your computer, and a new processor to go with it. There are other upgrades that might make sense, but those are videos for another time. There are three general chipsets that are uh, made today for the Intel sixth generation of processor, H110, H170, and Z170. They each serve their purposes, but today we're talking about the H170. If you want to see an overview of all three boards and all the CPUs that go with them, click here and that will take you to my Skylake overview where I have all the different motherboards out and I talk about them in more general comparative detail as to where they fit in the market and who should consider each one. We're not going to do that today because otherwise this video would be half an hour long and who wants to watch half an hour videos? Well, okay, some of you do, but I have a feeling based upon watching my watch time metrics, most of you don't. I will mention this briefly. These two CPUs are what I recommend. They can go in either board, it doesn't matter. Intel i3-6100, Intel i5-6500. I talk about these more in that video I linked to. I'll put it up here again. The overview where I talk about all the different CPUs and where they fit within the market. But in short, for any H170 motherboard, be it a Zeus, be it somebody else, i3-6100 or i5-6500 are the only two chips that should be considered. There are many others, but they're the only two chips that be, should be considered. But this is not a CPU review, so I'm going to put those over there. As far as these motherboards go, the only differences between the two motherboards you see in front of you is the size and the number of slots on them. This is what is called micro ATX, and it will fit in basically any ATX case made since a long time ago, more than 10 years. It is shorter than the full-size ATX case. The only thing that the micro ATX uh, um, excuse me, motherboard is missing is one PCI slot and one PCI Express 1X slot, neither one of which you are likely to use. So frankly, you're not missing anything. It could be a little easier to install components on the full-size board if you have a large case, a mid-tower or full-tower case, just because everything's spread out a bit more and there's a little bit more room to work. But to be honest with you, it makes no difference which one you pick unless you absolutely need those extra slots. And 99 plus percent of everyone watching this video does not need those slots. So this one has two PCI slots and two PCI Express 1X slots. Now, the PCI slots, those are the 20-year-old slots that came out with the original Pentium back in the 1990s. If you're still using those, it might be time for an upgrade. Okay, there, there are a few people who have odd devices plugged into them, and that's fine, but generally, you're not using those anymore. So I'm going to push that off to the side, and we're just going to talk about this. $100. Actually, it's a little less than that. I think at the moment it's $96, but roughly $100, $100 for the motherboard and either $120 for the i3-6100 or $200 for the i5-6500 gets you a full-featured motherboard with tons of features and options. If you're building a new machine, awesome but this isn't the model you want. If you're building a new machine, I'm going to link to it in the description below. You want the DDR4 version of this board. DDR4, I say? Yes. This is actually the DDR3 version, and it's for that first group, the upgraders. Why? Because this is a transition board. This is the new sixth generation board, but they've got last generation's memory slots on it. If you've got a three to seven year old computer, almost certainly you are running double data rate version three memory in it. It is not compatible with motherboards that need DDR4. 
Now, Skylake was designed for DDR4, and ideally it works best with it, but, but frankly the difference is minor. I mean, it, it will make more of a difference going forward in the future, but today it's a minor difference. If you're building a new complete, complete machine outright, look in the video description below for the DDR4 version of this board, also $100, by DDR4 memory, I'll link to some in the description below, and you're off to the races. But if you're upgrading an older machine, this is actually the board that you want because it will take DDR3. Asterisk. I will mention a detail about voltages later in the video, but for the moment, 95 plus percent of all the DDR3 memory in the past seven years will work in this board, assuming you only have four sticks of it. Now, what is in this case? What is in this box? Let's see here. And they're basically, I'm not gonna open them both because they're basically the same. Inside here we have a motherboard. More about that in a second. The rest of the box does not have a lot. What do we have here? We've got a cardboard insert and two serial ATA cables. These are for a solid state drive or a hard drive or a DVD burner or Blu-ray drive. So you get two cables. You have your I.O. backplane. This is what goes inside the computer and the I.O. ports stick through it so that you can have access to them. If you're upgrading an existing machine, you should have one of those in there. If you don't, and it's fixed and solid in the case, you won't be able to upgrade it. But if you've got one of these in your case, it'll be hopefully silver. Just take your screwdriver, turn it around to the uh, blunt end, the handle end, and just tap on the four corners and it'll pop right out. This is the screw to your M2 slot on the motherboard. More on the M2 slot in a minute, but don't lose this. Keep it. And then we have the manual. One of the reasons I love Azus motherboards so much. CDs that you should not need or use, because if you're installing Windows 10 on this, which is what you should be doing, because there's limited Windows 7 support for this, you probably don't need that. Manual. Lots and lots of details on all the pins, all the BIOS settings. Excellent, excellent manual. Many other motherboards, Gigabyte for example, often only includes like a two-page brief pamphlet in their boxes. Okay, if you know what you're doing and you install these all day, it might be overkill. But there is a lot of useful information throughout this manual to really help the new user who wants to know what all the different things on the motherboard are. Excellent quality manual. Now, let's get to the good stuff while you're really here. And I will get back to the memory and a couple of other things at the end of the video. Always nice opening up a new, new motherboard. They're so pretty these days. Years ago, motherboards were utilitarian. They were green, they were ugly. They were never meant to look nice. Now motherboards are made to look nice. Let's see what we've got here. The first thing you see right in the center is our CPU slot. It's covered by a cover. Don't take that off until you're ready to put the chip there. There are pins under that and you don't want to bend one because that'll ruin the motherboard. Up at the top, you've got your CPU fan. That is where the heat sink and fan that comes with the CPU will plug. There is no reason to buy aftermarket cooling or liquid coolers or anything fancy for either one of those chips and this motherboard. Those are for Z boards. Just use the one that comes with it. They work just fine. There is an eight pin CPU power connector up here. If by chance your older machine only has a four pin power connector, it may work, especially with the i3 chip because it only pulls, I believe 51, 54 watts, I think it pulls. I, you know, it's 51 or 54. It doesn't pull that much power. A four pin connector may work. For the i5, I'd want a power supply that has a eight pin connector. Power supplies are not terribly expensive. And if you have an old inferior power supply, it may be due for an upgrade. A nice EVGA 400 watt power supply is less than $30. Over here, you have your four DDR memory slots, dual channel, so make sure you install them in pairs. You've got your ATX power connector here. This provides power to the whole motherboard. Beneath that, you've got a USB 3 header plug. And you have another one down here at the bottom. If your case has USB 3 ports on the front, this is where you plug in the cable. It's going to be blue on the end, and it plugs right here or right here. If you have four USB 3.0 ports, use both of them. Each one provides two ports. Now, if you don't have USB 3 ports on the front of your computer, no worries. There is a small adapter you can buy that will go in the back of your case where the slots, there's a row of slots in the back of your case, and it will plug in here and provide two USB 
3.0 ports facing out the back of your computer if you want extra ports. Next to it here are two USB 2 ports. Again, if the front of your case has either two or four USB 2.0 ports, it's going to be a smaller plug that size, and you'll plug them in down here. Or if maybe your case has two 3 and two 2 ports, plug one here and one here, and you're good to go. So there's lots of ports and upgrade options. This, by the way, is far more than is on the H110 boards, and one of the reasons why you buy the H170 is more expansion. There are four memory slots here. There's only two on the H110. There's a lot more USB ports here than there is on the H110. So expansion is why you do that. Right here in the center, we have our graphics card. This is our PCI Express X16 slot, and this gray slot is where you're going to install and add in graphics card. Now, you don't have to. The graphics chips built into these CPUs are actually quite good now. They're almost twice as good as the ones in the previous generation. They're actually getting really good these days. You can play a lot of games on the integrated graphics on these chips. If you want to play Counter-Strike Global Offensive, the, the LEGO games, Minecraft, a lot of, of games, okay, it, they won't play Grand Theft Auto or Fallout 4. They, they won't. You need a graphics card for those. But there's a lot of games they will play. But if you do add in a graphics card, that goes right here. You have one PCI slot here, which you probably will never use. A single PCI 1X, a PCI Express 1X slot, again, you'll probably never use. There is a second X16 slot down here that is actually a 4X slot with an X16 interface. The pins only extend halfway across. You probably won't use it either. Now, fan headers. The CPU fan goes here, but there are additional fan headers. There is one here for your chassis fan too, and is there one more? This one might only have two. The larger board has three. This one has two. Nope, this one does have three. Okay, it's the locations are different. I looked at the other board earlier. It's up here. So if your computer case has one fan in the front bottom blowing air in, and then has one fan out the back blowing air out. No problem, you've got a plug here and a plug here to plug those fans in. If your case has more than two fans, you probably have a pretty fancy case and maybe you should be going for the Z170 boards, but you can split these. There's a $4 splitter cable on Amazon that will split these into two cables if you should need more chassis fan connectors. M2 slot, it's right here just above the video card slot. The M2 slot is for solid state drives if you don't go with a standard serial ATA solid state drive. Please note, if you're going to, in 2016, put a SSD into the M2 slot, you should probably be on the Z170 board, not on the H170 board. Why? They're expensive. A Samsung 950 Pro 512 gigabyte drive is about $320. Compare that to $150 for the serial ATA version. If you're going to spend $320 on that, you might as well be on the best board they make. Frankly, this will be nice in a couple of years when those get a lot cheaper, but at the moment they're premium priced. Speaking of serial ATA, you've got your four ports down here, two face to the side right here, and then two face up. This is nice because when you first set up your system and you have access to everything really easily, use the two ports on the side right here. Then if you later add drives in the future, it's much easier to insert cables straight in rather than to the side. And that's about all there is to say about that. Um, on the side here, let's take a look at the I.O. ports. You are provided with two PS2 ports. Why in the world they still provide PS2 ports is beyond me. PS2 has been obsolete for a very long time, but they do for some reason, and they are here for a keyboard and mouse should you still have PS2 keyboards and mice. Next to that, you have your three video ports. Now, if you're using the integrated graphics, you're going to use these. If you add in a video card, you will ignore them and never use them. You'll use the ports on the video card. But they provide two digital ports, which is a great thing, and I'll tell you why. If you have two 1080p monitors, it doesn't matter what size they are. They could be 21 inch, 27 inch, it doesn't matter. But two 1080p digital monitors, full HD monitors, plug one into the HDMI port right here and plug one into the DVI port 
and you can have multiple monitors running off the integrated graphics. Now don't game on multiple monitors, it doesn't have that much power, but what you can do is play a game on one screen and have your web browser, email, Netflix, YouTube, watching me perhaps, on the other screen. It, having Windows up on the other screen doesn't really use a lot of power and you can certainly play a game on one screen and have another one up or have different web pages up or maybe a Word document or email up here while surfing the web over here. You can absolutely plug two monitors. You could do a third. It does support three through the VGA port, but don't use the VGA port unless you really have to. Moving over from that, boy, this is nice. We have four, count them, four USB 3.0 ports. What are these useful for? You, uh, flash drives and hard drives. If you want to add external storage to your machine, portable storage, make sure you get a USB 3.0 drive. They'll be really fast, much faster than the old 2.0 ports. USB 3 is 10 times faster than 2. That is it. That, that's not like just double. 10 times faster. Much, much faster. Next to that, we have two USB 2 ports. What do you use those ports for? keyboard and mouse. That's what's plugged into mine. That's what I imagine most people would use, keyboard and mouse. Now by chance, if you've got a PS2 keyboard and mouse, fine. Plug your webcam, plug your printer. Of course, you can plug USB 2 devices into the three ports, so it's really no big deal. Above that, you have gigabit ethernet. Um, that is an RJ45 one gigabit ethernet connector. That's to connect to your cable modem or your router or however you get internet access. Now, wait a minute, you say, I need Wi-Fi. Does this thing come with Wi-Fi? No, virtually none of these boards come with Wi-Fi. However, Wi-Fi is no longer expensive to add. I will put a link in the description below. There are two options I'll send you to. The first one is 10 bucks. For $10, you get a small USB adapter that will plug into any of these ports and provide you with basic Wi-Fi. It's not super high speed, it's not the latest and greatest standard, but for 10 bucks it'll work fine and if you're just browsing the web, it's great. If you do online gaming and by chance you absolutely cannot connect to the hard, hard line, to the hard uh, ethernet connection, then I'll give you a $20 option. That is AC Wi-Fi, it's the latest and greatest standard, it's faster, and so for 20 bucks you get better Wi-Fi. Next to that we have our speaker connectors. Now, this motherboard does have multi-channel HD audio, but to fully utilize the full eight channels, you need a breakout box. If you have an eight-channel sound system, you probably should be on the Z170 board. This is a mid-level board, but you can plug in standard speakers, even surround sound speakers to this. You can plug in uh, headphones, microphones, etc. all plug in there just fine. Now, I mentioned earlier that I was gonna talk about the memory and the asterisk I mentioned about DDR3. This motherboard takes double data rate 3 memory. If you have a 3 to 7 year old computer, you're using DDR3. However, you are using probably either 1.5 volt or 1.65 volt memory. Skylake, which is what all this is, officially only supports 1.35 volt low voltage DDR3. Your 3, 5, or 7 year old memory is almost certainly not low voltage memory. Even today, the low voltage memory is relatively hard to find. Most memory is 1.5 volts or higher in the DDR3 standard. You are technically running out of spec putting your old memory in this motherboard. However, I have this exact motherboard and this CPU installed in my son's computer at home. I've got 16 gigabytes of DDR3 1.5 volt memory installed in that computer. It has been running for almost six months now. It runs stable, fast. I've had no problems with it, knock on wood. I have no assurances of the longevity of it. Will that extra voltage make a difference to the memory controller over time? I simply don't know. Be aware that if you put your older memory into these boards, you are in fact technically running out of spec but it may not matter. It's one of those things that you're not technically in compliance, but it may not matter, but be warned that if you do have a problem, don't come back and blame me, you were informed. If you are the kind of person who wants to be 100% sure that you are completely in compliance, you're not gonna be able to use your old memory, in which case you should get the DDR4 version and just buy new memory. 
because DDR3 low voltage memory is just as expensive and why go buy new DDR3 when it is now obsolete. So I want to give you that little heads up about the DDR3 versus DDR4 memory. Links to both these boards and the small and large version of the DDR4 version will be in the video description below. Links to the CPU and the memory that I recommend will also be in the description below, as well as a couple of other things such as the fan splitter that I mentioned. Did you like this video? You know what to do. Oh, uh, you can dislike it if you dislike it. Remember to subscribe to my channel by clicking the button below. Did you like this video? Was it helpful? Do you have comments, feedback, suggestions, constructive criticisms? By all means, leave that in the comment section below. I uh, appreciate all comments. I read them and I do reply to many of them. Now, if this video was helpful to you, please use the links in my video description below to buy these items off of Amazon. Why? Because they are referral links and it does pay me a small commission uh, towards whatever you buy. It doesn't change your price in any way, but it does pay me a commission for the referral. Full disclosure, I did not receive any of this stuff for free from either Amazon or the manufacturer. I bought this with my own money off of Amazon. I buy almost everything off of Amazon. I live on that site. I love the place. So I'm a customer, I'm a fan, and I'm a fan of everything you see here. This is the stuff that I recommend to my family and friends. This is exactly what is sitting in a computer at home. So. That's how I feel about it. I, I spent my own money on it. If I ever do receive free stuff from the manufacturers, I will always disclose it to you in the video. I will never hide any association or affiliations I have. That's just the kind of person I am. I appreciate your time watching this video, and I will see you next time.